Hi, I'm Tom Shoebridge and welcome to So You Want to Be a Screenwriter. Today we're going to look at plots and these little clips aren't going to show a lot of plot but they are a tiny essential element of a plot. party's going to be like humanity at its finest. A lot of people confuse plot and stories and we're going to look at the difference of, of those and I'm going to use an example from Chinatown. Spoiler, I'm going to talk a, a, a lot about it so go see it first before you watch the rest of this. Okay, so plot is not story. Story is the general concept of a narrative and a plot is a series of very specific, organized, um, in a sequence, leading to a conclusion. A rough example is uh, a story is a, a detective who comes home and finds that his wife is missing very mysteriously. In the plot, as he comes through the front door, the detective recognizes that things are different, that the house is immaculate, Everything is, is in its place, nothing untoward. He goes upstairs, the, the children are in bed, they're fast asleep. Everything is perfect except that his wife is not there. So when we're creating plots, we're going to have a line of little beads called scenes, which we're going to talk about later, and they're going to be strung together on the string of narrative. In other words, the plot is a continuous line of action moving towards a conclusion. Now, there are going to be things that are going to interfere while other stories and other characters while that plot is being unraveled. But the plot is what's going to keep our viewers' attention. They are going to know what the ending is. They're going to try to anticipate it. And our job is to make it an unexpected ending. That's what makes it a great plot. So the main plot is sometimes called the through line of drama, or it's in television it's called the A plot. What it is, is basically the story of the major character and what goal they want to achieve. And that's what we're going to be fascinated by and we're going to want to continue to hang in there until we find out the conclusion. Now, the subplots, and in television they're lettered um, B, C, and D, uh, in the order of their importance. And so that their uh, role is basically adding interest to the main plot. And again, beginning writers very often just have another story that's in the major story. That doesn't work. What you have to have is a plot that is organic to the main plot. In other words, there's a reason for the character being there and for that character wanting um, their own achievement in this story. And the same with the C plot and the same with the D plot. They have to be not only intertwined physically, in other words, intersect occasionally, 
but they also have to have a direction and a goal of themselves. Just as minor characters have to have a real life, so too do, do plots. And also, plots have arcs. And we talking about um, acts and talking about scenes, we will be explaining arcs in more uh, detail. But generally the arc of a plot is that it has a beginning, a middle, and an end that is all that are all tied together. And that arc is one in which it, it goes from introduction to increased involvement by the uh, audience to a satisfying conclusion. That's the arc of drama. That's what people go to expect when they go to the theater or to the film theater or turn on their television. They expect an arc that's going to be believable, that's going to be authentic, that's going to entertain them, and that are going to meet all the requirements of this plot line. The complexity of plot really depends on the kind of story that you are creating. And in good stories, the, each time a B or C or D plot is introduced, we are interested because it is an interesting um, storyline. We don't mind that we're away from the main plot, which is the reason we're really here, but that we will enjoy and it will further enhance our experience of the main plot. So when you're thinking about what else is happening in the story, who else is in it, what other dynamics are there in your story that are parallel to and similar like and or conflicting with the main plot. That's really the heart of dramatic storytelling, is getting plots that are feasible, believable, and that are understandable to the level of complexity that is dictated by the kind of story that you've got. Um, so developing storylines, developing plots, is a very, very important part. When Chinatown came out, and I remember it very well, we were all blown away by how, quote, perfect it was. And not only did it star um, one of the most familiar faces in Hollywood, Jack Nicholson, but also the smoking Faye Dunaway. Put them together into a noir kind of crime story, and you've got the basis for an incredible uh, film, and it is. But Robert Towns script is really what makes it all work. That he has plot lines that really bring it together into an organic whole. If you watch it now, you might find it a little bit slow, but hang in there, it is well worth it, and it's a wonderful teaching tool that I used for years and years, even though it's a reasonably long, um, story to teach. There are basically four plots. Plot A, remember, spoiler alert, plot A is the fact that the water commissioner is killed very early on. So what drives the story? Who killed the water commissioner and why? Plot B is the detective gets in love, falls in love with the femme fatale. Who is she? What's her background? What's she doing? What are her intentions? Very, very mysterious. So we do want to find out whether or not they're going to be in love and stay in love throughout the whole film. And will they go off into the sunset together? The third plot line is who is the young girl? She's a very mysterious character that, who flits in and out, um, very often off screen, talked about, but is an essential element which is maybe the best third uh, plot uh, in all of uh, film. The fourth one, which is the gravitating one that we, uh, we gravitate towards, is the role of the father of, uh, in this. An old, rich man who's obviously very powerful, and he plays a key element. These four very strong plots in, in and of themselves are all brought together 
in a final scene which is maybe the best final scene in American film. It all comes to this horrific crunch in which all of the revelations come out, all of the future is predicted and we are totally satisfied as a, an audience even though we are totally dismayed with what has been revealed to us and what we know is going to happen in the future. That's what plot can do. It can make us think about a film, it can make us remember the high points, it can brand into our mind what the conclusion is like. So when you're developing stories, remember, you got to have a strong rope for a plot, otherwise you're left with a story that's mushy.